good evening. Thanks for joining um, me and Thomas this evening. Um, so my name's Olivia. I work for the Farm Safety Foundation. Um, I joined almost three years ago now. Um, and I've just been asked to speak a little bit about farm safety, what we do, um, what the charity does day to day, some of our campaigns, um, touch on a bit of farm safety and mental well-being and sort of how that ties into all the money that um, Harper Rag have been raising over the last couple of years, obviously specifically this year as well. Um, so we have four work streams that we, we look at, the first one being education. Um, so we train young farmers up and down the country through our education program um, and also through the Young Farmers Network as well. So we've almost trained over um, 6,000 students now, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and with the support of our industry partners, we're obviously being able to improve the understanding of physical and mental wellbeing in agriculture. Um, alongside that, um, we attend shows and events every year, obviously not this year, um, but we've been trying to really build a strong network and communication base um, through our social media to ensure that messages of farm safety and mental health are getting out there. Alongside that, we have um, two campaigns we run every year. We have Mind Your Head, which takes place in February around Valentine's Day every year. And it was our third year doing that this year. And then we also have Farm Safety Week, which is in its eighth year, which happens in July. Um, and then finally, we conduct research every year, normally in August, and we look at young farmers, so the next generation like you guys, and look at behavioural change, what thoughts and feelings are on mental health and farm safety and how both are connected. And then this year, um, it was really interesting. We completed some research on an older group of farmers as well, so 50 plus, to see what their opinions and values were for the industry and farm safety and mental wellbeing. Um, so that was the first time we've done that and there was some really great evidence that which we're releasing um, over the next couple of months. So I'm sure you're all aware, but there is a lot of people that work in agriculture, 476,000 people to be exact, which is actually only one and a half percent of the working population. But every year they still account for 20 percent of all workplace deaths. Unfortunately, last year, 20 farm workers lost their lives as a result of working in our industry. And on top of that, one member of the public, a four year old child. In agriculture, it still remains the only industry within the UK that actually has children dying on a workplace. And this is something that we have been trying to address over the last two years and hope to continue to push forward. But what is actually causing these fatal injuries then? So over last year, seven were killed by a moving vehicle, four were working at heights, four being struck by an object like a tree or a hay bale, two by animal, two by machinery, and then two by something collapsing on top of them. And what I'll talk about tonight is a few things of how you can remain safe while at work or um, at uni, and then how you can take them back into the workplace. So firstly, why do we actually need farm safety? Well, because of the law, both criminal and civil, but also mor morally, I'm sure all of you will have either heard or know somebody that has either lost a limb or lost their life as a result of farming. And, if you were that person that saw someone jump in that tractor with a broken PTO guard in the back and then later you heard that they'd had an arm or a finger um, ripped off, you'd feel really, really, really sad about that. So morally, we want to encourage young farms to speak up and actually say, if you see something's wrong, say something about it because you want to be the person that hopefully will save someone's life. Or if you look at it from a different angle, actually from a financial point of view, um, the HSE charge a whopping £154 an hour um, if they have to come and actually have a look at the incidents happened on your farm. And over the sort of the last year, um, they actually charge £675,000 to farmers across the UK for completing this work. And what we always say when we deliver our training is that this normally is the one that impacts the older farmer because it's all about money. And that £154 an hour can easily turn into over £1,000 just to write a report. So even if just one of those things stands out to you, it's really important to take those away today. While you're at work, it's important to remember that you do have rights. So your employer must provide you a safe place to work, um, have a safe system and buildings and equipment, but also provide you with the training and supervision you may need to do a job um, and the information and instructions if you haven't done a task before. So there's a different bit of kit or you're completely brand new to the industry, 
it doesn't matter a new bit of kit is a new bit of kit and you need that training and supervision to make sure one you do the job properly correctly and um, but also to keep yourself and those around you safe but also as an employee you have responsibility to look after yourself and those around you so as I mentioned the moral point of view that if you see something's wrong speak up and don't be afraid to cooperate with your employer and do not interfere with any safety arrangements unless it's really unsafe to do what they're asking you to do so we'll talk a little bit about machinery so what are a couple of things that you can look out for well when working with machinery make sure you do safe stop just like when you get out of the car you apply a handbrake put the controls in neutral stop the engine and remove the key this means if you do have to do any work go and open the gates someone else either can't jump into the machine if you do have a dog which you shouldn't in a cab they're not going to lean on any bit of buttons or the gas pedal and it can go rolling into you so make sure you safe stop at every opportunity Plan your jobs beforehand. So have a think about what the weather conditions have um, been doing. So like I know in Warwickshire here, it's been very cold, wet and windy today. So think about is the is the kit OK for the job? Is the ground going to be any different? Is it going to be wet? Um, are you need any PPE or an extra layer of coat to keep yourself warm? And feed into that. Do your pre-start checks. Look at your machinery. And then if you do have PTO guard shields or chains in place that you do not remove them or modify them in any way to save time. And only use the machine if you know how to do so safely and you receive the suitable training. Um, almost three years ago now, um, a girl down in Devon, Lauren Scott, lost her life, unfortunately, um, due to a PTO uh, incident. And I know one of the great things that the Young Farmers Clubs did down there was that when a tractor was taken in for a service, the dealer would not do any of the work they need to do on the tractor unless they pay, replace their PTO guard um, if it was damaged or broken. And just in a year, they actually changed over a thousand PTO guards, um, which is absolutely amazing. So unfortunately, Lauren lost her life, but something, a movement down in the southwest actually happened. And that was absolutely amazing. And we had the privilege of speaking to Lauren's family and understanding what that meant to them and what that means going forward down there with the Young Farmers Clubs as well. A little bit about ATVs. Um, if you are in an ATV, they obviously don't have a cab. Um, so your only protection is what you wear. So always wear your helmet. Remember that you shouldn't um, carry passengers or dogs um, if the ATV is using a light agricultural vehicle. So there's one seat, there's one bottom, no carrying anybody else on that. And if there is um, a shore of bale or a bag of fertilizer in the back, making sure it's secure, it's in the middle, so it's stable. And the same thing again, plan your route, check ground stability and do your pre-start checks. Check your tyres, make sure you've got gloves, have you got a helmet, have you got a visor that can be pulled down in case something flicks up into your eyes. Working with livestock is really important. Um, so take the time to understand and know the behaviours of the livestock you're working with ensure that you are either trained um, and you're also agile to work with livestock so if you're working with your grandfather that's 80 he's really not going to be able to jump over um, the fence at the back is he so just remember if you are working with someone that is older or isn't as mobile that there is an escape route for them and leading on to that having good handling facilities having adequate gates having a well-maintained fence and crush and also having an escape route which is easy access for people inside but also outside to help you out as well and that may be having um, an extra metal gate that you can push against them if they're coming towards you um, or having like a little man get gate that you can actually get through. It's also really important to stop passing disease and infection from animals to humans and ensuring good personal hygiene more so now than ever and also wearing the correct PPE when working with animals as well. Be careful around cows and heifers with newborn calves and really important, do not turn your back on a cow following calving. And as you know, they are really protective and they will get in between you and their cow. Um, sorry, and their calf. PPE. PPE sometimes gets a bit looked over in agriculture. You might think, oh, I'll shove them that dust mask that I've had for 10 years. No, that is not going to protect you. So when you're using PPE, making, making sure you use the correct equipment. So wearing reinforced boots or wellies, gloves, helmets on your ATV. Wearing overall something that you're not then going to go inside the house and bring any um, mud, dirt, any infections that may be on the farm. Um, also wearing a safety harness if you're working at heights. And also, really importantly, wearing hearing protection. If you are going to be working with a little bit of kit, we're going to be doing some drilling, 
put on that hearing protection because if you're in that space for a long period of time you can't hear the person across the yard talking to you it's too loud it's too loud for your eardrums and um making sure you wear a mask suitable for the job so if you are mucking out or if you're working um, with slurry there are specific masks you can get which you can find extra information on the hsc website um making sure you are wearing the right mask for the job so that you are protected and your lungs are protected as well there's a couple of really important numbers for you to remember. Um, the first one is 112. Obviously, 999 is the one that everyone knows, but 112 is an emergency European number, which is available 24-7 and anywhere in the EU as well. If you call 112, there um, is someone you can speak to on the emergency services, and it links to everyone, so the emergency services, the police, medical, fire brigade. But also, if you have somebody working on your farm that English isn't their first language, they have over um, 80 different interpreters through 112. Um, so if you or somebody else needs it in a different language, that's a really good number to remember. But also 105. So if you come into contact with an overhead power line, or maybe if you even have a power cut, 105 is the best number to get you in contact with one local um, operator. And then finally, what three words? I don't know if any of you've got downloads on your phone already. Um, it's a free app um, and they divide the world into three by three meter squares. And it's much easier remembering three, um, a three word address compared to your um, coordinates because your postcode is only going to take you to the farmhouse, the farmyard, and it's not going to take you up the field five fields down, two trees across. So what three words is really good. And even if you remembered one three letter word address for a field, at least they'd still be able to find you. I'm just going to show you a quick video now how mental health and farm safety is actually connected. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. You're not listening to me, all right? I can't stand it when you don't listen. You're doing my head in. Fine. You don't want to talk about it. You don't want to listen. Are you, are you done? Are you done? You know what? I've had enough. Yeah, and go on. I'm going out. Go on, walk away. Get to our... need to calm down and have a proper discussion so let's talk later i got the sausages you like tea you are your farm's biggest asset but if you're not in the right headspace Please mind your hair and farm safe. Visit yellowwellies.org for more information. So that just shows that actually a little thing like an argument over a bill or a little tiff you've had in the morning because someone hasn't made you a cup of tea can really affect how you're going to be for the rest of the day. So just remember, if you are in that headspace, you are in an angry mood, you are feeling a bit upset, you're not 100% there in your mind, take a moment, walk away from the situation, do not jump on that bit of kit, do not go to the top of the field in a huff, it's really not going to serve anyone any favours. Having that extra five minutes, whether it be to look around and look for hazards or looking out for hazards within yourself, that's really, really important. So on top of the 20 farm workers that lost their lives in agriculture last year, there was actually 107 registered suicides among farmers and farmers, I'm sorry, farmers and people working in agriculture and agricultural related trades in Britain. That's 107 people and families that didn't know their loved ones were suffering, that didn't know another way out. And that's why we can talk a little bit about mental health and resilience. So why is actually our problem? Well, as I just mentioned, 107 people 
lost their lives as a result of suicide in 2018, which is the latest stats, by the way. Um, there was six, uh, six and a half thousand registered in the UK, 11.8 percent higher in 2017, and the first increase since 2013. Three quarters are registered amongst men, and this has been the case since the mid 90s. And then three quarters are over the age of 35. But why does that still mean something to us in the agriculture industry? Well, actually, the average age of a UK farmer is 57. Even though women are becoming more prominent in agriculture, and that is absolutely brilliant, there are still far more male farmers than female farmers. So if we look at the age of 59 and male, these people are within our industry and within our category that we need to do something about. So as I mentioned, we carry out research every year and over the last three years, we've introduced some questions on mental health and the link to farm safety. And it's been really, really interesting actually. Um, the first one we asked was mental health, is it, is it one of the biggest problems faced by our farmers today? And over the last two, um, two years, it has jumped by 6% to 88%. And I think the fact that people are recognising it's a problem and it needs to be looked at is really, really good. And then the next one, is there a link between farm safety and mental health? Yes, 85% of the 400 um, farmers asked said that. And then also, if we continue to talk about farming, will it remove the stigma attached to it? And almost 90% of those people said yes. So if we continue to talk about it, if you continue to talk about it at uni, if you continue to talk about it on social, that is really going to help people to know there are people they can go and talk to and there isn't a stigma around it and they're not in this alone. So how do we um, actually build resilience and try and increase our mental health capacity? Well, we can look at some research the mental health foundations done. So we can take notice, we can be aware of what of what's around at the moment, just looking at the present, appreciating what we've got, the people that we've got around us, savouring those moments to reaffirm our priorities, whether that be spending time with family and friends, and obviously at the minute it's limited, so just looking and saying actually I can go on that dog walk or I can go to the pub and have a drink and appreciating actually you can do that and there are people around you that do love and care about you. Having a clear the head day, a, clear, a clutter free day, think about everything you're worried about at the moment and then have a think, what can I do about it? We have a really good exercise that you can find on our website on our little book of Mind in Your Head. And it looks at um, a welly and you can fill the welly with everything. So what can you fit in that boot? Put everything in that you think is bothering you. It could be your mum, your brother, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. It could be anybody. It could be to do with bills, some uni deadline you haven't got to yet. It could be anything. And have a look at those things and actually think, what can I do to make a difference in those things? Some things you won't both change and some things you will. So have a moment, not might not even be a day, an afternoon, a rainy afternoon. Have a think, what can you do to make the stresses be relieved off your shoulders? But also take notice of how your friends are and other co-workers are feeling as well. And if they are acting different, feeling different, you notice that, make sure you ask them how they are. The Mental Health Foundation have also said if you keep learning that actually you can increase your resilience. So if you learn a new um, hobby, like, I don't know, if you're at uni, you might be doing rugby, a sport, um, another sport, music. That can obviously increase your self-esteem and encourage you to do social interaction and be more active. It might all be virtual at the minute. and um, That's better than nothing. Try and set some goals. Be realistic about what you can and can't do. And also, if life does feel out of control, find something that can help ground you, so whether it be a person or a thing, so whether it's a musical instrument, whether it's a best friend. So keeping learning about those around you and having new hobbies can definitely increase your higher levels of well-being. Giving is really important. Um, obviously, you guys have given to us, which we're really, really grateful for, which we'll come on to. Um, but also give to those around you as well. So compassion and kindness, finding ways to look out for people around you, whether it be volunteering, donating, writing thank you notes to your teachers, to your friends, to your um, flatmates. Checking in regularly on friends and family, whether that be by FaceTime or face to face, just checking how they are and what they've been up to. And it's just the little things like making a cup of tea or a coffee or saying oh, they haven't got a pen in their bag. I've got a spare pen. Do you want that? It's just little things, thinking how you'd like to be treated and putting that on somebody else that could really make their day. And also, are you OK? This is a question we ask every day. As soon as you start a conversation with somebody, 
you say are you okay but how often do you actually wait and hear what they say if it's yeah I'm all right what does that actually mean are they hesitant to answer that question because they're not feeling okay or are they being like yeah I'm absolutely fine I'm perfect had a great week that's very different because they may be overcompensating they might be actually inside thinking oh shit I've had a really shit day but don't want to tell them I don't want to bring anybody else down I just want to say yeah I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine and brush it under the carpet really take a note of how that person says and responds to that question because if you can notice that small change in them you can really make a difference just going to show you another quick video now Isolation and stress are just two of the reasons that high numbers of farmers experience depression and poor mental health. Four out of five young farmers say this is the biggest hidden danger in the industry. The first step to improving your mental well-being can be as simple as talking to someone. Hello? To learn more about who to talk to and how to get support, visit yellowwellies.org or follow at yellowwellies UK on Twitter. That video gets me every time because it's silent, spending all day on your own, in a cab, in a field, there's only the noise around you is the countryside. There's a lot of time to think, isn't there? And as that guy said, he um, showed, he picked up the phone at the end of that video. That was the biggest move he could make, and that would have taken a lot of courage to do that. So the more that we speak about mental health and normalise people asking support, whether it be professionally or from a friend or family member, let them know their courage is there. They do have the support, and you'll be there for them no matter what. So how can you actually help them? Well, you can help yourself and those you live, work or study with, but you need to educate yourself in mental health, what it looks like, what it sounds like, how it's actually affecting the industry by some of the stats I gave you earlier. I'm not sure if any of you have heard, but we've got um, an A6 pocket size guide we created last year called The Little Book of Minding Your Head. Um, I do have hard copies if anybody wants one. You could ask Thomas and I could maybe post a couple out to you. Um, but I know obviously at the minute um, you may not all be on campus. Um, but we also have a link on our website and you can download it or you can use the flip book on there if you don't want to have a hard copy. Um, it looks at what mental health is in more detail, so what depression, suicide, eating disorders, bulimia, etc. looks like, how it's impacting our industry and those around you, what it looks like, what it sounds like, how to manage it, how to, to manage stress specifically, um, and then also what suicidal thoughts are, how would you deal with them, but also how would you help somebody in that situation as well? Because if you ask somebody how they are or you offer your support, you've got to be able to understand how you can assist them, whether that just be giving them a number to somebody they can speak to or just checking in on them. You can't ask a question and then not be there at the end of it. You need to offer that support and, and mean it. So importantly within that, how to start actually start a conversation about mental health. How would you approach the situation? How would you ask them? Because you actually might just feel nervous about saying, I notice you haven't been coming to the pub, you've been feeling a little bit down, you don't seem like yourself. That's a really hard question to ask sometimes. So in there, there's a few conversation starter tips. And then finally, who can also help you? So people like, there's a farming helpline, um, you've got FCN, Rabbi, etc. There's loads of different people in our industry. We're really lucky to have people that can help us. So everything's on there. All the links are on there to all the different charities' websites as well. But how are you helping in the bigger picture? So I guess the main thing is actually you're helping us deliver our training to um, young farmers through colleges, through YFCs, through NFYFC. 
um, also through into Wales um, and Scotland and now Northern Ireland as well. So your money is helping us continue to conduct our research every year, finding out more about what young farmers and older farmers are thinking about farm safety and mental health. That then helps us tailor our training to be better, to be more informed um, and to give people the right support they need. Helping us to create our guides. So on our website, we've got um, five different guides. Um, a little book on your head, a guide for students, a guide for parents, temporary workers, coping with COVID. So that's brilliant. And also, as I mentioned, continue delivering training through our colleges, through our new virtual reality training. So this year we've had to redevelop our training. We were going to colleges, as you can see in this picture immersing students within the farmyard scene whereas now obviously having to live everything online so every donation that we get is fed back into giving people what they need and that is training whether it be farm safety or mental health so we just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for your ongoing support and i know that thomas has just mentioned that um RAG are going to support us next year as well, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, so anything, if you guys do do anything on social media, please do tag us from Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Um, and if you are going to be doing anything um, online or, or even face to face in the, next year when we can, um, please let us know because we could even do something like a takeover. Um, we'd love to be able to showcase what you guys are doing. Um, and in the last couple of years, you guys have raised a lot of money for us as a charity. And we're really, really thankful. So we'd love to say thank you in as many, as many ways as we possibly can. So if I stop sharing my screen, hopefully, I'll have you all back. Brilliant. And I hope you've learned out today. Was there any um, questions at all or anything that anybody wanted to ask? Oh, we've got one coming. Um, someone's just saying, please uh, have a hard copy of the book you mentioned. And we do actually yeah. have some in the office um, already. Oh, okay. So uh, feel free to pop up to the office and get one if you wanted one, guys. We've got plenty. Brilliant. Um, we just... Uh, Someone else just saying in the chat, um, have you had a high increase in from farmers due, due to COVID? So us personally, we don't have um, a helpline or hotline, um, but I know that the Farming Help, which is a, which is a band of um, charities have, bear with me a second, <coughs> um, they had had an influx in calls um, during the start of COVID. I know it had tailed off, but... They're now saying because obviously it's getting darker, it's winter. Um, I know some people have had bad harvests, etc. There have had been an influx in calls. Um, and I think that a lot of people are trying to reach out on social media now. I know from our experiences personally that we've had quite a few young farmers messages on Instagram. And I think a lot of people now feel that it's easy to type a problem or something they want to talk about rather than picking up the phone so I think some charities are having to adapt the way that they're answering to farmers and to young people because obviously the way the industry is moving at the moment but I think that if any you know anybody or you're suffering you can always reach out to us and we can put you in touch with the right person within your area so that's really important yeah I think that's I think that's right you've yeah. got asking for help yeah, definitely. Um, so, so we've got a couple um, of questions coming through. Um, someone's saying, uh, what has been one of your biggest achievements for Yellow Wellies? Um, do you mean me personally, or do you mean um, do you mean as a as a charity as a whole? If you want to let us know in the chat, then I can <laughs> I can answer that oh, one. Okay. Um, what's, what's the way to that one? Um, Someone, Joe is saying, um, what do you say to someone who thinks um, mental health in farming is not important? Um, I think you can say to them that if you look at, obviously any death in farming is, is bad and we, don't, and we don't want that. If you look at the number of 107 people within one year alone have felt like suicide is the only way out, that's something that really stands out to me. I think the amount of people um, that still don't know their support out there or feel like they can ask for help, I think you'd have to say to them, imagine if that was your friend, your mother, your brother, someone was struggling and that happened to them. I think that's what you really have to ask them and say, how would you feel if that was someone that you loved and cared about? 
Um, and I think you can just refer them to um, someone like the Mental Health Foundation that have got some really good information on there on um, how to actually ask somebody how they're doing. And I think if you ask them how they're doing, they're maybe struggling with themselves. They're trying to compartmentalise it as well. So just say to them, if it was your friend or family member, how would you feel? Yeah. Um, yeah. In response to um, the, the other question they were referring to. Uh, the oh, as a charity. Um, I think the main thing for us um, is that three years ago when we were discussing about having um, a campaign to look at mental health and we wanted to set up the Mind Your Head Week, we had a lot of pushback from people in, outside of um, NFU Mook and obviously the foundation as well saying, why would you open that up to the industry? We don't need any more stresses. It's fine. People just deal with it. And we got a lot of pushback from that. And I think as part of Mind Your Head, we were able to work with charities um, in the agricultural community. And that show there are people out there that can support them. They have been for many, many, many years. And no matter what people say, we will do what we think is right for our industry. So I think creating the Mind Your Head Week was a massive success for us because now in its third year, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Um, and from that, as I mentioned, we have people reaching out to us on social media. And there's obviously now the farming helpline as a, as a whole. So I think Mind Your Head and mental health and farm being spoken about has pushed everybody in the industry to speak about it more. And that can only be a good thing. So yeah, our big achievement, I think, is that. That's great. Um, great. Um, questions. What if they want is saying, um, what is mental health support like in rural areas? Um, is this a difficult time yeah. trying to reach out to farms with yeah. mental health problems uh, compared to, say, a rural, an urban area? Um, I think obviously it's it's more difficult because um, I know when we were first starting doing our research, um, there was a lot of people saying they weren't asking for support in a local area or a rural area, area sorry, because they didn't want to be sort of ostracised, neither like the rest of the village or the town or people to be speaking about them. So I think definitely that, um, I'm going to read, read the question again, and the difficulty is obviously making them feel that they're not going to be spoken about, that they're the support out there is confidential so if they don't want people to know their business they don't have to and I think people as if say in, say in London for example there's going to be a lot more condensed of people and people do tend to share their problems like if you're in an office space there's a HR department that you can go and speak to there's more mental well-being um, focus whereas on a farm you've only got yourself and it's your dad your boss or your employer so I think that mental health in rural areas is growing there's loads of charities that are specific to areas like you've got Yana that cover Norfolk um, Worcestershire and Suffolk as well so there's loads of specific charities in little areas so it's it's definitely becoming bigger and there's people that can help thank you and we've got a question from Emily uh, saying how do you think we can better encourage farmers to engage with improving farm safety uh, specifically those who are less responsive to the need for action? Well, that's a really good question. Um, I think we can lead away by an example. Um, so if somebody asks you what you're doing or showing you how to do a job, don't just say, oh, quickly show me. I think encouraging young farmers or any farmers to look at farm safety is looking at how to do a job safely, but also that's going to make the job be done quicker. Like if there isn't an accident, there's not going to be anything they have to deal with. So look at it as a bigger picture. It's going to cost farmers and businesses less money um, if there isn't an accident happening. So if we try and do it in a, in a fun way, I know a lot of people online now are using Instagram and takeovers and reels to promote farm safety and different elements. Um, and I think not the dairy daughter, so Amy, she's doing some really great things on fencing and working with dairy cows. So just having fun created different ideas that actually improves farm safety but is a fun way to in interject that um and i think the unresponsive ones i think if everyone keeps banging on at them about how to improve their farm safety and how to look after themselves and those around you i think in the end they're actually going to be the ones that are going to look a little bit silly they're going to be the ones on the outside actually and everyone's going to be saying why didn't you do that so i think if we all keep talking about it um 
it's going to make them feel that they need to jump on our great bandwagon and do stuff and look after themselves and their people around them. Hmm. Oh. Uh, someone is now saying, um, how old is Yellow Ellis? How has the charity changed over time? Um, so I've been at charity for three years, but the charity started in 2013. So a little bit of background. So um, NFU Mutual um, started Farm Safety Week in 2013. It was just a one week campaign. And soon after they actually delivered that campaign, they realised that this doesn't just need to be one week in a year. It needs to be 365 days a year. And that's where the Farm Safety Foundation was born. Um, and over that time, um, Steph, who runs a charity, she's been there since 2015. And since she's been there, she's seen it grow from Farm Safety Week being just a one week campaign to obviously delivering training to um, over 30 different land based colleges and universities throughout the UK. Um, the introduction of obviously Mind Your Head, um, actually, businesses contacting us to have Farm Safety Mental Health Rooms. They, for example, Tesco's, Muller, Arla, they've all had our farm safety and mental health training and that they're looking after um, their farmers. So then their farmers are safe when they're producing their product. So it's developed in a, in a massive way. And I think for us, social media has been a massive part of that. And we've now got over 30,000 followers across all three of our social media channels. And I think Yellow Wellies in Young Farmers is a massive thing. And I know this week's National Young Farmers Week as well, and we've just celebrated the fact that young farmers have raised over £10,000 for Yellow Wellies this year alone, which is amazing. So um, over the last almost eight, well, seven years, um, the charity has grown and grown and grown, and we only have bigger things to come. Great. I think there's been a good relationship with Harper over the last few years. Yeah, yeah. 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 with the, the academic science. Um, with, the, with the course teams as well as with the, with the senior. Yeah, I would agree with that definitely. So we, we've got a question, um, another question saying, um, although things have improved in recent years, um, I perceive there's still a stigma around what will happen if you start out problems with your own mental health. How do you do to deal with this? Um, I think that the main way to deal with this is that can people just continue to talk and to raise awareness of mental health in, in farming. I think that from our research, we found that almost 90% said if we speak about it, it will, it will just destigmatize the issue. And the more and more people that do speak about it and share their personal experiences, people are going to feel more normal about it and feel so and so on social media said that they've been struggling either over lockdown over the last 10 years and they've been able to go to their GP, speak to somebody over the phone and actually get that counselling service or speak to a family member. It's actually made a massive difference to them. So I think the main thing that we can all do to tackle that stigma or fear around asking is to encourage those around us and yourself to speak about it at, at uni, online, um, in discussions that you have in everyday life. So I think the other thing that we'd love to we'd love to be able to do is have more mental health ad, um, advocates for the Farm Safety Foundation. And so, if you or know you or know anybody else that would like to be one, please get in touch with us because we would love to do more. We'd do more on that as well. Uh, it's kind of following on for that, yeah, I'm, with, that. Um, I'm just asking how people to talk. I think you can just ask them how they really are um, and if they're not ready don't push it I think that's the main thing if they're not ready to talk and you keep asking them that's only going to stop them from wanting to open up with you so what we say to do is if you see someone that is struggling um, ask them if they are okay and ask them if they they want to talk about it if they say no leave it with them but then don't just leave them completely just say do you want to go for a cup of tea or do you want to go for a walk making people know that you're there but not in a sense that you just want to speak about their mental health that you're there for them um in different emotion emotions as well so continuing that conversation with them and not leaving it blank for a long period of time i think is a main thing to encourage people to talk okay. well um thank you everyone oh, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you're saying uh, uh, not part of the custom and tradition to keep going and be strong, uh, keep going, be strong and seen as a strong. Is it not part of their custom and tradition to keep going 
um, yeah. strong and seen as a sign of weakness? I think that um, there is a little bit of that still. I definitely think from um, discussions and things that we've seen, the older farmers think that a lot. We know that said is a is a feeling and emotion in younger farmers as well. And I think it's that I'll be fine. I get on with it. I do everything else. I've got cattle to feed. I've got things to do. And I think, as I previously mentioned, if everybody keeps speaking about it, it's not going to be seen as a sign of weakness. That stigma is going to be detached from that. Um, it is something that is going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. Definitely it won't happen overnight. Um, but I think if you can save those around you, that it's okay. It's okay to open up. There are people out there that can help you. Hopefully that will make them feel like it's not a weakness. The support is there and you're not the only one going through it. Real. Um, do we have any other questions? Oh, yeah, we've got another one. Um, what can we do to remove the fear that some farmers have um, that should the worst happen, they would be anyone to carry on work at the farm? Um, let me just read that question again. What can we do to remove the fear that some farmers have? I'm not too sure how to answer that question, um, to be honest. Um, no, I don't know how to answer that question. So I would rather not, just I don't want to give a wrong answer for that one, if that's okay. Yeah, no, that, that's... Yeah, no, that's, that's Does anyone have any... Um, have any um, kind of rephrase that question? Rephrase that question. No, I think that... Uh, I think might, yeah, that anyway. uh, might be it. I'd just like to take some chance to take a time is really an interesting um, As usual, every time we get involved with them, we just kind of learn something a bit different. Um, and it's good to see the charity is growing. Um, I actually think the awareness of the charity is one of the best which is always good to see. Always good to see. Yeah, thank you. That's okay. And I think if you guys want anything else or want any other questions answering, please do reach out to us on, on social. We'll be more than happy to, to speak to you. And just another big thank you from us, really, and just to say that um, we're really grateful for all that you do and um, continue to work with us. So we look forward to doing more with you guys in the future. Well, and yeah, so we're at uh, the we're oh, yeah, um, uh, week of the 6th of November. So, uh, great to see everyone kind of at half getting involved and uh, we'll be tagging you guys and everything we do uh, as well so you're aware of what we're up to. that's great thank you look forward to seeing that brilliant thank you guys oh i think we've got one question. oh just someone saying uh, thanks, thank right, oh so, thank uh, you actually um there's anyone who wants to attend this evening but missed it um the session has been recorded, so in a couple of days it will be uploaded to our YouTube, and then Olivia, I'll send you the link as well, so you've got it uh, if you ever want to uh, get back. Okay, and, brilliant. Uh, anything that we've said. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.